Hello and welcome, this is Paul Sandu and uh, today is uh, Tuesday, November the 6th, 2018. I'm just driving around in my car today and I thought I'd just take this time to do a short video. And what I wanted to talk about is the attitude that people have as far as being judgment, well, judgmental towards God and the Bible. Okay, they always, especially they just make a separation between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And they say, oh, the God of the Old Testament, he is so cruel and he is so mean and he is this and he is that. And, you know, as a rule, not as a rule, this is 100% the case, that almost 100% of these people have no idea about what is actually in the Bible. They do not know the history of the Bible. They do not understand, you know, when uh, God sent judgment, what was the reason for those judgments, okay? So today I wanted to discuss the topic of God as a judge, as the judge, as a matter of fact. You see, that is one of the responsibilities of God is actually to be a judge and to judge evil in his creation. It is like you think of it this way, right? We live in a society and in a society, what do we have? We have to have laws. Whenever a group of people interacts with each other, we need certain rules and laws to govern behavior amongst each other, okay? You are not free to, you and I are not free to just go marching into a neighbor's house, start, you know, destroying his property, start stealing his money, you know, or uh, doing worse things like, you know, raping and pillaging, you name it, right? We have laws against them. And uh, if somebody does that, then they are arrested and a trial is held. And the judge, who is the presiding judge, if the person is found guilty, they pass judgment upon him. Now, do you see people, you know, when you have, let's say, a murderer or a child abuser or something like that being held on trial, are people out there saying, oh, this judge is so evil because he is going to pass judgment upon this person? No, the person has done something evil and wicked and therefore, as a society, we have determined that this type of behavior warrants judgment. And therefore, in God's creation, you know, he has his laws. Okay, God is a great king. He is, he has a kingdom. Whether you realize it or not, you live in his kingdom and you live under his laws. Now, therefore, when God sent judgment, okay, as for, let's take, for example, the people that lived in this place called Canaan in the days of Moses, okay? Moses, when he brought the children of Egypt out of, the children of Israel out of Egypt, God promised them that, you know, they would go to this place and call the land called Canaan, and they were going to displace the inhabitants there, okay? They were, they were told that they would essentially, you might consider that to be a genocide in today's terminology, okay? that these people were essentially going to be wiped out and their land would be given to the children of Israel. And this is one of the reasons why people say, you know, that the God of the Old Testament, excuse me, the sun is really bright and uh, it's a bright fall day here. So, so this is a very shadowy, this video, but that's okay. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why people who have heard a little bit of this story, they don't understand the background. They don't have no idea about what the reality of that judgment was and why it came about oh how can you worship a god that does this you know that that ordered like you know women and even children and everything to be killed okay first of all let us look at the background here in the case of these people of canaan what were they doing among other things the list is rather long but let us take a look at what they had what they practiced ritually on a regular basis, which was infanticide. Okay? That is, they would take little children and they generally sacrificed them by burning them in a fire to this god that they worshiped called Moloch. Okay? That was just one of the things. The list of all the abominable activities, evil things, evil behaviors that these people were 
occupied in. It was that list is extensive, but you can read about it, especially in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. Now, God had promised this land to Abraham. Abraham is the father, the grandfather, you could say, of the children of Israel. And he was promised that he would get this land of the Canaanites. But he was also told that they, God would wait 400 years before he would fulfill that promise. Okay, So essentially, the Canaanites were given by God 400 years to correct course, to stop all these abominable activities, evil, wicked, and horrific beyond words of the things that they were doing, and to change 400 years. Okay? Now, in our society, let's say a man commits a murder, do we tell the man, okay, man, don't do this anymore, okay? And then next day he goes and commits two murders. Do we tell him, oh man, don't do this anymore, okay? And the week later he commits four murders. Do we tell him, oh man, don't do this anymore? Or the first time the man commits murder, he is arrested and imprisoned and put on trial, okay? Yet God gave these people 400 years, 400 years. Okay. Did they change? No. They got worse and worse and worse and worse. And that is history teaches us that. As society as a rule degenerates and it gets worse. Okay. Civilized people don't stay civilized for very long. And that is exactly the path we are on today. So now what is God supposed to do? Is he supposed to just keep ignoring it forever? God's word says that mercy rejoices against judgment. Okay, so God's mercy is always going to come first, that God will always seek to be merciful before he sends judgment. But there does come a time when time runs out and then judgment must come because if God did not do that, he would be negligent in his responsibilities and he should not be, he would not be qualified to hold the position of God, the judge of all creation. Okay, so judging people, judging evil is a very big responsibility for God. He does it very reluctantly, but eventually it does happen. Now, instead of trying to understand as to why. Now, another thing you need to look at is the perspective. If God is sitting up there, we are down here. Let's say it's, it's like you are in a forest and you can't see the forest for the trees, okay? You have no idea of the big picture, but somebody is flying above in an airplane or a helicopter. He has a much better view. He can see what's going on down there much more clearly than you can, okay? So God sitting above, the vantage point, he is called the most high. So he has the highest vantage point of all. If he sees it, what he is seeing, you and I are not seeing. Okay? So just because something may seem to be cruel or unjustified, it is not so. Because the word of God tells us that God is going to be put on trial on the day of judgment. It is not just going to be the judgment of all people. God will willingly allow everybody to put him on trial and yet he will be acquitted because he is a righteous judge. All his judgments, nobody will be able to prove the innocence that was judged, not a single person. All right. And therefore, seeing what he sees, the decisions that he makes, we just don't have that knowledge and information. So first of all, it is God's responsibility to be a judge. And secondly, Secondly, what he sees, we do not see. So the wise thing, a wise person would say that yes, the Bible teaches that God is loving. His, one of his main characteristics is, is what's called loving kindness. He is loving and kind. He is merciful. He is gentle. He is love, the Bible tells us. He is light. Therefore, he is not going to involve himself in, in dark, evil activities. We are told that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. We are told that God cannot be tempted with evil. If people have studied their Bible and they believe in the God of the Bible, they will know who he is. It's only people that don't know him 
that have only basing their opinion on hearsay. It's like, you know, people all have an opinion about Donald Trump or Obama or somebody like that, what they see in the news. But I can assure you that their spouses and their families who are close to them will have a completely different opinion than yours because they know the person. Okay, so it is people who have heard of things about God that make these, you know, comments and they write comments. Oh, yeah, I cannot, I cannot believe in a God, you know, the Old Testament or something like that. Well, the God of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ in the flesh who loved us so much, you know, that he gave his own life to save us. And that's what God is. God is love, love, okay? But love also requires to be a judge, to judge those who are evil. And God doesn't judge just like Adam and Eve when they sinned against God in the Garden of Eden. God didn't judge them right away. He clothed them. He gave them everything that they required to still be fruitful and to multiply. That's how God is. I know that from my own personal experience that, you know, I do things wrong. I have done many things wrong and I still do what we call sin. And I'm not, you know, free from that. But I know how merciful my God has been to me and he is towards everybody. Okay. So what I will suggest is that you rather, you know, seek and you shall find, seek to understand him. And then you will have the answers. But just because somebody, some you know, so-called expert or whatever, got up on uh, one of these TV channels or something like that and started, you know, spouting, oh yeah, how can you worship, how can you believe in a God that does this, this and that? Well, first of all, your information is incorrect. And second of all, you are a fool because you have believed secondhand information rather than studying and researching for yourself. As I have, therefore I know my God. And therefore I know whatever the people are saying is a lie that they have no idea what's in the Bible. They have no idea about the history of the Bible. They have no idea about the character of God in the Bible. They don't. If they did, they would not say anything like that. And so I'll end this here and I'll note that yes, it is required of God that he should be a judge. And secondly, that his judgment is always tempered with his mercy, that you know, mercy comes first. Yet if people who are given an opportunity to repent, which means to change their way, if they absolutely do not, they insist on continuing in their evil, wicked ways, then judgment will come and it should come. This is Paul Sandu.